Hello Swifties, welcome back to my channel. I am the Taylor Swiftologist and I bet you thought you'd seen the last of me. It's been a while since I posted a video, but I am back and I am very excited to fulfill one of your requests. I asked you guys for video ideas in the comment section of my last video and this one really spoke out to me and it was talking about Taylor Swift's tour outfits and tour costumes. I have been wanting to discuss this for quite some time as a PhD holder in Taylor Swiftology and I know that all of my subscribers are basically coming here for lessons on things that you might have missed out if you're a fairly recent stan. I have been around forever, basically, hence the Speak Now tour t-shirt that I'm wearing purchased in 2010. So I wanted to walk you through the visual narratives that are created through Taylor Swift's touring opportunities. And I love tour because it really gets to add a whole other element to an album cycle, right? So we get like the sounds, the audio soundscapes, the interviews give us a little bit more texture, the videos give us some color. But I think tour is like where it really comes to life and Taylor's imagination gets to run wild. And with a couple of exceptions, I think she hits the nail on the head every single time and adds something new to her album cycles with the advent of whatever it is that she has decided to put on her body for tour. If you haven't already, please subscribe. We are very close to 3,000 subscribers. I am excited about that, um, so please subscribe. I know that you all want to know when my secret session video is coming and when the Patreon is coming, and my answer is, I don't know, okay? <laughs> I don't know. Just roll with the punches with me, okay? Just a little bit. I, I have a couple of things that are keeping me from focusing on this really intensely for a couple of months, so just bear with me, okay? Also, make sure to like this video and leave me a comment with video ideas as per usual. I'm trying to do a strategy where I like do videos that are like maybe more appealing to a mass audience so that I can grow my channel, hence the Dance Moms ranking video that I did last time. And then this video is really more for my like Swiftologist fans, you know, the people that are here for the fucking mundane information and analysis of things that really don't matter and uh, spaces in your brain that should not be taken up by useless information. So this one is a video for you. Um, and I guess we'll just get straight into it. So before we get into her headlining tours, we must discuss the debut era. We didn't get to have a full kind of visually realized moment, but we did get a couple of festival performances and tours with the Rascal Flats, among others. And you know what? I feel like the outfits for this were pretty true to the debut. It was kind of a mess. It was a little low budget. It was a little, I don't have a stylist and I'm a teenage girl, so I'm just gonna wear what I like, which was totally cool. She also had a sundress line out with Walmart at the time. So the sundress and cowboy boot outfit, I think is very sweet and very reminiscent of who she was back in these very early infant stages of her career. Um, also, we have the beautiful bouffant ringlets. I feel like her hair was like especially wildly curly at this time. And I do be wondering, like, is her hair naturally that bouffant? Or did she have to like really go undergo like a perm or some sort of like daily routine to keep it up the way that it was? I mean, we see now that her like untouched hair, I suppose, is wavy, but it is not like this. <laughs> it's not like that anymore, which makes me think that there was some like stylistic interventions and I would love to know what they are. I won't, but I would love to know. Speaking of hair, the hair gets just whoop, zooped down a little bit. It gets tamed and under control for the Fearless Tour, her first ever headlining tour. For me, the Fearless Tour was kind of all over the place. Like in, in hindsight, it was not as amazing as I thought it was when Journey to Fearless came out on DVD because I didn't get to catch the Fearless Tour. One thing that I did love about the Fearless Tour was that it introduced the kind of withstanding tradition that we've had through most tours, except maybe the Reputation Tour, which is very disappointing to me, um, the Quick Change. The Quick Change is a extremely Swiftian sleight of hand that happens on stage during a tour. What is a Quick Change? It's exactly what it sounds like. She uh, takes off an outer layer and reveals something cute underneath. And in the Fearless tour that was during Love Story, she had this very like elaborate Georgian gown and it gets torn off for the white dress at the end of the song. Very cute. I really love this concept. I believe she first did it at the Country Music Awards in like 2008. And she expanded that idea. She took that production value and she added it back into the Fearless tour. This is something that she does over the years, which you will realize as I walk you through the rest of her tour outfits. She kind of like surveys her promo era and sees what she really liked and then takes that on tour with her. So this is kind of the first example of her doing that. Also the first quick change, although there was a quick change earlier on in the show, during the opening number, You Belong With Me, she comes out in her marching band uniform, which then gets ripped off to reveal a gorgeous gown underneath it. My hot take is the gorgeous gown underneath is like 
it could have been more gorgeous. You know, it was just kind of like a shimmery black and silver number. And she had this style of dress. I don't even know what to call it. Um, she had this style of dress for the entire tour, basically. The only dress that like kind of varies from this routine is the blue dress that she sings Tim, Tim McGraw in. But otherwise, I mean, it's just variations of the same thing. I am partial to the purple version of this dress. I think that it looks nice. She was very pale and she had a red lip. It looked good together. But by far, my favorite outfit from the Fearless Tour is the red dress. The sequin red dress, it's a little more form-fitting. It's a little more uh, scarlet letter. It's a little more scorned woman. Um, and this actually is a really cool connection to a performance on the Speak Now Tour. And that's because the song that she sings on the Fearless Tour, Forever and Always, is connected to the song where she wears a similar dress on the Speak Now Tour. But I love the red dress the most. There is a bit of an iconic moment at the end where she's wearing that black Diana revenge dress gown thing, um, where she has the rain come down and she's like screaming, should have said no, weird closing number, I think we can all agree. Um, but overall, I would give the Fearless Tour outfits like a 7 out of 10. I think that's a very respectable, nice score. 7 out of 10, 6.5 maybe just because there wasn't a lot of variation. The whole point of the Fearless Tour was that she was reaching out to the masses and reminding them that she was just like them. This was her whole thing at the beginning of her career, right? It was like she was speaking directly from the pages of your own diary. She was the every girl. She was just like you with a little bit of aspiration involved, but leaning more heavily into that everyday girl that you would meet at school and become besties with. And I think that she achieved that without causing a ruckus very well on the Fearless Tour. Speaking of causing a ruckus, we have the amazing show-stopping never been done before Speak Now Tour. Now I am partial to this tour. It is my favorite tour. I just think that the set design and the staging and the set list and the storytelling that went into this production, the fake snow during back to December and the people, the dancers pretending to play violins. They weren't actually playing violins, fun fact. Um, it was all just very iconic and pleasing to me at this moment in my career. Let's just walk through everything. First of all, we have the most iconic dress that she ever wore ever of all time. Never been done before, hasn't done it since, won't be able to do it again. It is the gold dress. Now, why is this gold dress so excellent? Because it moves beautifully. And when you're on stage, like obviously there's a lot of lights going on you. There's people taking pictures. There's people taking video. When she's moving, like when she's thrusting her leg up in the air or she's doing a little quick pivot, it is truly magical. It has the effect of like a beautiful rainstorm and she's a house of cards. Do you know what I'm saying? It just feels like an event dress. It feels like she's attending a gala where she is, you know, that bitch showing up. And my favorite thing ever is that she wore it with cowboy boots. That was just like, it was a very sweet detail to me. These more sophisticated black leather cowboy boots. Um, but I really, I just, I think this is one of her best tour looks of all time. It's iconic. It comes up repeatedly in our promotional packages that she's done subsequently for other tours and other things. You just can't escape this one when you're talking about great Taylor Swift stage outfits. It did everything that it needed to do. It captured the storytelling and the absolute uh, fairy tale nature of Speak Now so well to me. Moving swiftly on, we have the blue dress, which is the, I think this is kind of a debate whether it's purple or blue. I think that it's blue, but I know there's a lot of debate about this, but she dons this for Speak Now and she has her little gloves on and she does her cute little dance. I think that this dress is really like understated and beautiful. There's something very like 50s about it. The like rouging on the corset. The only fault that I can give this dress is that she had a wardrobe malfunction where, you know, a gust of wind came at the wrong time and basically blew it up over her head and we saw her Spanx. So maybe it doesn't win all the awards just for that pure, like very functional issue. But I think that this is maybe the second most iconic dress from the Speak Now tour, just because it comes up in most of the pictures. Also that moment at the end of Dear John where she's doing the high note and really going for it. She's wearing this dress. So I think that, you know, a pivotal part of the show was performed in this outfit and therefore it serves, okay? It goes off. The blue dress for Back to December was cute. I liked how the dress kind of like laid over the piano stool. Um, it looked nice, nothing particularly special. And speaking of things that aren't special, the mean outfit, which is like a prairie girl dress. I mean, I have to give it to her with the storytelling. Like it reflects the vibe of the song for our song and for me. It's the callback to her country era. I like it. I just think that it looks a little weird. Like it's not very flattering to her. I appreciate the purpose that it served. Um, and it kind of highlights that every day, every girl part of her persona that she does like to hammer home every now and again. So now we come to the Better Than Revenge dress. Do you see that it's red and sequined? Do you see now that it's connected to Forever and Always? 
from the Fearless Tour. Both songs are about Joe Jonas. Both songs are about being scorned by Joe Jonas. She wanted us to make the connection. Speaking of making connections, one of my favorite things about the Speak Now Tour was that she used her own literal arm as a mood board. If you wanted to know what she was going through that day, all you had to do was decipher what she had written on the back of her hand. And those of us who were using Taylor Connect, I'm not gonna explain what that is, those of us who were using Taylor Connect back in the day, the OGs, we would spend hours trying to look at these low quality pictures and figure out what she had scrawled down her arm. I love the big poofy dress that she wears at the end for 15 in Love Story. This is very sweet, it's very endearing, it's very princess, uh, main character vibes, which is what the whole Speak Now tour was about. Sidebar, I love that the stage was like wooden. It had this like antique vintage vibes, little clamshell like lighting things with 13 written on the back. Like the attention to detail on this tour was a very intricate and I very much appreciated it. Especially because Speak Now is really like an album for the fan. And I think the enchanted dress is very understated, very pretty. And we have the like pirate rag, red burgundy, scary dress for Haunted where she comes out of a bell and starts hitting it really hard. I actually really like this a lot. I think that it's cool. I think that it's a little edgy. We didn't get a lot of edge on the Speak Now tour. And then we have the long live dress, which I just think is kind of boring. But overall, I give the Speak Now tour a 10 out of 10. What can I say? There is no other tour that does what this tour does, in my view, in my onion, in my professional onion. So 10 out of 10 for the Speak Now tour, Fearless Tour wishes that she was able to do this and she couldn't. Up next, we have the Red Tour. Now you would think, you would think that I would be capping for this album cycle, this tour. I can't because I feel like the looks were kind of all over the place with this one. I remember she said that her inspiration for like the set design of the Red Tour was a Broadway production, which I don't really get because Speak Now feels like, the Speak Now Tour felt much more like a Broadway production moment. I mean, Red is a little bit more sparse. The staging was more like industrial and mechanical. Um, definitely more like New York City inspired, even more so than the 1989 tour. But I can definitely see how she was trying to up the staging element a lot in this production. The stage was much bigger, it was much more complicated. We had that like rotating arm that kind of went throughout the show. It was very versatile. The stairs lifted up, like it was just, it was a cool production. Unfortunately, I feel like the costumes were a little all over the place. So we start with the white button down shirt and the black leather high waisted shorts, iconic and reflective of the era. She wore those fucking high waisted shorts every day of her goddamn life. Um, and she had her little bowler hat that she signed and would hand to the fan in the front row. Um, I thought that this was cute. She also wore like little red sparkly shoes with this. Up next, we have the You Belong With Me sparkle dress with the matching gloves. I am obsessed with this. This is one of my favorite tour looks of all time up there with the gold dress for me. It is so adorable. It is so cute. I love the Oxford shoes that go along with it. It's just all a little bit iconic. The remix of You Belong With Me that she did here was so good. I'm Really pissed that she cut it from the tour by the time it came to Singapore. This outfit didn't appear on every stop of the tour when she cut this version of You Belong With Me from the set list, which was really irritating to me. But iconic, love it. Um, it definitely fits in with her whole like Kennedy, Hyannis Port um, preppy vibe, which was weaved fairly successfully throughout this tour, which leads me to my next point, that like stripy shirt that she had and the red jeans slash the red high-waisted shorts. She would occasionally swap this moment in the tour out and about. Um, I liked this preppy version of it with the red Letterman jacket. I think there was a version of it that you could buy on the merch store and I really wanted it, but it was $300, so I, I did not purchase it, but I wanted it. Um, and then eventually she started swapping the particulars of this out for t-shirts based off of her location, wherever she was. So in Singapore, she wore a Singapore shirt. She wore an I Heart LA shirt. I loved this. I thought this was so fun. I love anything that like mixes up the monotony of tour. Sorry, I had to turn my light on there. It's getting dark outside. That's how long I've been gabbing about this shite. The back half of the Red Tour, we kind of get into the inspired by looks. So the first one is I Knew You Were Trouble. And she basically rips this off as like a hybrid from her Brit performance and her AMA performance. She's, I think, taken elements of both and incorporated them into this particular outfit. I hate the white dress that comes on first. It is so ugly and rouged and um, it looks cheap. Like it looks tacky and cheap. However, the little romper that she has on underneath in which she slinks about the stage looking like a vixen, um, I love it. It's iconic. And what does she do? A quick change into All Too Well. She wraps a little kind of like dress moment around it and makes it into a long flowing gown while she whips her hair back and forth like a demon playing All Too Well. 
I am obsessed with this portion of the show. I think that it's really cool. I like that the romper is so versatile. It has like three different iterations, which is very iconic to me. The love story dress on the red tour is not my favorite love story dress. I have high standards for the love story dress because I was so bowled over by the quick change and then the beautiful bouffant poofy moment that we had on the Speak Now tour, but I will accept it. It's like a modest, uh, modern version of the fairy tale extravaganzas that we've had in prior iterations. We wrap up the show with the circus outfit for We Are Never Ever Getting Back Together. This is another super, 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 super iconic tour look. Did you know, however, that it was taken from her EMA performance? She did an EMA performance of We Are Never Ever Getting Back Together and I guess liked it so much that she just used the jacket again. And I have to say, I love the whole circus theme for We Are Never Ever Getting Back Together. It's a really fun way to round out the show. But like the album, the Red Tour is all over the place, <laughs> visually. It, the album sonically is, you know, front to back bizarre, and the tour is also front to back bizarre. The pacing of the show was a little strange, and the outfits were inconsistent, but, you know, we end on a high note with this We Are Never Ever Getting Back Together jacket. I liked it so much, I even had a version of it made, and you know what? It got me to meet Taylor. So I guess I'm super happy that the Red Tour visuals exist. What am I gonna rate the Red Tour? I'll, I'm gonna go for a 7.5, because the highs were very high, but the lows were kind of bland and boring, which is actually worse than being terrible in my opinion. Up next, we are looking at the 1989 tour. Now the 1989 tour was not a tour. It was a global Victoria's Secret fashion show actually starring Taylor Swift and her vast array of best friends. What was the point of the outfits for this show, you ask? It was to emphasize how long her legs were and how skinny she was. <laughs> that was, I think, I really do think that when she went to go and design these costumes, she was like, I, listen, I have a model's body at the moment. I am a double zero and I would like to accentuate that. So all the crop tops, all the form fitting, form hugging leotards that you can think of, throw them my way and just put a few crystals on them. And that is exactly what happened. The entrance outfit that we get is a very cute, like bedazzled crop top with a metallic skirt. Um, there was like a purple, a blue and like a teal version of this. But she also had this cool ombre, pink, blue and purple version that I was very partial to. We didn't get to see it that much, but I liked it and I thought it was fun. Then we get into the blank space outfit, which is another ripoff of a performance that she did. It is her Brits outfit that she wore for blank space, um, but bedazzled. Proportionally, it looks kind of odd. Like it's very structured and it has like shoulder pads and then it kind of disappears into nothing and her legs just go on forever. But like I said, at this point in her career, she could really wear anything and get away with it because she was very skinny and like when you're uh, skinny clothes tend to just kind of like hang perfectly on you. Up next is a very controversial outfit. It is the white two-piece crop with high-waisted short and the black boots. Now I remember having a visceral reaction to this outfit when I saw it. I was like, oh my god, this is the ugliest fucking thing I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> like really, I was shook. I was like, what the hell are those boots? Why aren't the boots white? Why are they black? Why are they paired with this outfit? And why is there like a little piece of fabric connecting them to the shorts? It was a little strange, but I feel like I was indoctrinated to like this outfit because I just kept seeing it over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. So I just saw images of it constantly. Every single day of my life, I was bombarded with this outfit. And so I've kind of grown to like it, weirdly. I think that it like, again, if it wasn't on a like giraffe that was super beautiful, it would probably look terrible, but it is being worn by a super beautiful giraffe, so. It looks good. The How You Get the Girl outfit is really super cute. I love that it's like neon and light up and that was a really fun moment in the show when we would all get to like jump around and we had these light up bracelets that would correspond with the color of the dress. It was fun. It was a really fun moment and I think she looked very adorable and pastel perfect. Prim and proper in this moment of the show. You know things that weren't prim and proper though were her body figure hugging leotards. My favorite one is the Out of the Woods edition. So there is the standard like gold silver-ish one um, that I love, which starts out being a dress. You know, we have a quick change here. It's a poofy dress and then she takes it off and starts strutting for Wildest Dreams. I love this. Again, very iconic images came from this. Um, I love watching her strut and obviously it just hugs her body really well and makes her legs look really long and sparkly. So when she's like putting her stomping into action down that super huge catwalk, it looked really good. What can I say? I love a sparkle moment as well. So anything sparkly is fun to me as long as it doesn't look 
gaudy. And I think that the 1989 costumes were probably the most tasteful ones in that I feel like they weren't like super overly costumey, but nor were they boring like some of the Red Tour outfits were. The slinky sexy moment of the show really was style though. And we had a couple variations of the style outfits. The classic one is the silver, which obviously is beautiful, looks amazing on her. I mean, what else can I say about a sparkly romper? There is a pink version of this that is stunning. And this was, this was rare. This was like the white tiger of Taylor Swift outfits on tour, okay? It was very difficult to come across, um, but I thought that this one was actually even prettier than the original one. Side note, the Out of the Woods leotard also had an alternate. I believe it was only worn in Germany. I don't know why that random fact just came to my head, but there was like a black version that was kind of spidery. Um, I liked that too. It would have been cool to have her alternate between those more on tour. Bad Blood outfit is all leather. This one is fitted kind of weirdly. Like there's just something, it looks a little too big almost. I don't really know what's going on. All I can think of when I see this outfit is when those two guys tried to jump up on stage and pull her off stage. And that is not a good memory for me. And then we have the final dress, the final outfit, the best look of them all. It is the shimmery crop top flapper, 30s-ish leg extravaganza. There were many variations of this. There was a pink one, there was a blue one, there was a green one. My personal favorite was the green one because I'm Irish and when we were in Dublin watching the show, she showed up in her green version of this. I really appreciated it. And then of course there was that weird random one time when Taylor wore Fifth Harmony's janky budget costume. I mean, why did she do that? She should have just worn the white two piece with the weird black boots. That was better than this. So what would I give the 1989 tour? I would honestly give the 1989 tour a 9.5 out of 10. Um, I took a 0.5 off because they're not the most creative looks in the world, but they're very iconic. What can I say? They add something to the story and that story is I am hot and young and I live in New York and I have a lot of friends. And this just elevated that for me and really took it to the next dimension, okay? And then finally to conclude, we have what is probably my least favorite tour look. It's the Reputation tour. Reputation had such an interesting visual potential. I've always said that I really wanted a visual album with Reputation and there was so much that she could have done with it. And the looks that we got in the Look What You Made Me Do video really had me hold my hopes up high for the Reputation tour. I think something to consider with the Reputation tour is that her, her body changed at this time. And I think she was a little less confident in her stage clothes. For the first couple of months of promo for Reputation, of which was few and far between, she wore like a hoodie and sweatpants exclusively. So I think that there was definitely like an, a mental adjustment going on for her. Sort of going through that process of realizing that being a size double zero wasn't worth it and that it was actually more worth it to be healthy and to get through a show and have fun, which she absolutely did do. It seems like Reputation was the healthiest tour she's ever done. However, as a result of the kind of all over the place visuals for Reputation and I'm guessing a little bit of like body insecurity, I think that the Reputation tour outfits are boring. They're very safe. Um, they're very bland. They're very muted. I would have loved to see like brighter color. I know that Reputation was kind of a monochromatic album, but like I think we could have had pops of brighter colors just to stand out while she was on stage. I mean, it was a stadium tour after all. Um, she has to be seen from many different angles and from very far away. So the whole kind of like black, the whole show or variations of black or mauve or burgundy, I think we could have had different colors. I also don't think that green is her best color. This specific like khaki military green that she was doing in the Reputation Tour, that was not my favorite. So I hate the green guitar too. That's one of my least favorite guitars. I might do a video ranking all of her guitars. I love talking about her guitars. There are so many of them as well. My favorite outfits from the Reputation Tour are probably the opening bodysuit with the long sleeves. She looks amazing in that. I love the silhouette that she serves when she's doing Ready For It as the opening number. Then we kind of swiftly drop into things that I don't care about after that. There are several other kind of sequiny, shimmery things, um, but they're all in black or in a very bland snake print. Like why, why can't we do snake print in a fun color? Why couldn't we do a hot pink snake print? That would have looked cool. But instead we got these like bland variations of the snake print and then we also got a military jacket with patches all over the arm. It was okay. This is my thing with the Reputation Tour. I liked the boxy jacket for Getaway Car, but again, it didn't stand out to me. The dress for Don't Blame Me was looked too similar to what she wore and look what you made me do in King of My Heart. Like there just was not enough variation here and the set list was very, very bizarre, but that is a conversation for another day. I'm going to rate the Reputation Tour a six 
out of 10 visuals wise uh, for specifically for the costuming. I'm not going to talk about the staging and setting. That's for another day. If I had to rank them in terms of my preferences, I would have Speak Now as the greatest, most beautiful gowns, number one. Number two, I probably have the 1989 tour because it was very iconic. Number three, I guess I would have the red tour. Then I would have the fearless tour. And last place, I would have the reputation tour. Sorry about it. I just didn't think that the outfits really belong in the Taylor Swift Visual Hall of Fame. And that's my onion. And you can't argue with me because this is my channel. <laughs> well, that about wraps up my TED talk on Taylor Swift's tour outfits. I hope you liked this video. I'm sorry about the lighting. I got kind of weird towards the end. If you liked it, make sure to subscribe, leave a comment. That's not rude. And I will see you in my next video. Goodbye, Swifties.